Hello friends and welcome to a lecture on evolution. In today's lecture, we shall deliberate upon Darwin's theory on evolution, the evolution of population, concept of species and mechanism of speciation. Let me first of all begin by highlighting the definition of evolution. Biological evolution simply is decent with modification or it can be technically defined as a gradual process in which something changes into a different and usually more complex or better form. Evolution can also be defined as a process by which an organism becomes more sophisticated over time and in response to its environment. Evolution helps to understand the history of life. One of the misconceptions about evolution is that it's the theory about the origin of life. Evolutionary theory deals mainly with how life changed after its origin. Moving on, let's now talk about the historical aspect of evolution. In 1831, Darwin sailed around the world in HMS Beagle, a ship from England. He observed many organisms and saw that they were very well suited to their environments. He was impressed by the ways in which they survived and produced offspring. He wondered why different species lived and did not live in similar biomes. He collected fossils and some were unlike any creatures he had ever seen. He wondered why the species in the fossils had disappeared. Darwin's observations on the Galapagos Islands influenced him the most. The islands are near one another but have different climates. He saw that the characteristics of many animals and plants varied noticeably among the different islands. He wondered whether animals on different islands had once belonged to the same species, for example, Galapagos finches. According to this hypothesis, these separate species would have evolved from an original ancestor species after becoming isolated from one another. These observations led Darwin to formulate the theory of evolution, the main features of which are as number 1. Overproduction or rapid multiplication. You know all organisms possess enormous fertility. They tend to multiply in geometric ratio and the reproductive powers of living organisms, that's biotic potential, are much more than required to maintain their number. Let's take an example of paramecium, which divides three times by binary fission in 24 hours during favorable conditions. At this rate, a paramecium can produce a clone of about 280 million paramecia in just one month and in five years could produce paramecia having size equal to 10,000 times than that of Earth. Similarly, a codfish lays 1 million eggs per year and a housefly 120 eggs in one leg. Number second, limited food and space. Despite of rapid multiplication of all types of species, food and space and other resources remain limited as it increases only automatically. Hence, these limiting factors do not allow a population to grow indefinitely. Number third, struggle for existence. The struggle for existence can be of three types. It might be intraspecific struggle, that's the struggle between the individuals of the same species, or interspecific struggle which is the struggle between the members of different species. The struggle might be for the food or resources, etc. Number third, environmental struggle. It's the struggle between the organisms and the environmental factors, such as drought, heavy rains, extreme heat or cold, earthquakes, disease, etc. Number four is the appearance of variations. 
you know, except the identical twins, no two individuals are similar and their requirements are also not exactly the same. It means there are differences among the individuals. These differences are called variations. Due to these variations, some individuals would be better adjusted towards the surroundings than the others. Adaptive modifications are caused through the struggle for existence. According to Darwin, the variations are gradual and those which are helpful in adaptations of an organism towards its surroundings would be passed on to the next generation, while the others disappear. Number 5. Natural Selection or Survival of the Fittest The organisms which are provided with favorable variations would survive because they are the fittest to face their surroundings while the unfit are destroyed. Originally, it was an idea of Herbert Spencer who used the phrase the survival of the fittest first time, while Darwin named it as natural selection. To explain the phenomenon of survival of the fittest, the extinct reptiles can be cited as an example. During the evolution of reptiles, giant reptiles like the dinosaurs Astra appeared. Majority of them were herbivores, but due to certain climatic changes, the vegetation disappeared and therefore most of them became extinct. However, small animals which could change their feeding habits from herbivores to carnivores died survived because they could easily get adapted to the changed environment. These therefore will survive more and hence are selected by nature. Darwin called it as natural selection and implied it as a mechanism of evolution. Number 6. Inheritance of useful variations The organisms, after getting fitted to the surroundings, transmit their useful variations to the next generation, while the non-useful variations are eliminated. Number seventh is the speciation, that's formation of new species. Darwin considered that useful variations are transmitted to the offspring and appear more prominently in succeeding generations. After some generations, these continuous and gradual variations in the possessor would be so distinct that they form a new species. Now let's move on to another aspect of our lecture, that is the evolution of populations. One common misconception about evolution is that individual organisms evolve. It's true that natural selection acts on individuals. Each organism's trait affects its survival and reproductive success compared with those of other individuals. But the evolutionary impact of natural selection is only apparent in the changes in a population of organisms over time. Consider the example of medium ground fish, Geospiza foots, a seed-eating bird that inhabits the Galapagos Islands. In 1977, the Geospiza foots population on the island was decimated by a long period of drought. Of about 1,200 birds, only 180 survived. Researchers observed that during the drought, small, soft seeds were in short supply. The finches mostly fed on large, hard seeds that were more plentiful. Birds with larger, deeper beaks were better at able to crack and eat these larger seeds, and they survived at higher rate than finches with smaller beaks. Since beak depth is an inherited trait in these birds, the average beak depth in the next generation of Geospiza foots was greater than it had been in the pre draft population. The finch population had evolved by natural selection, however the individual finches did not evolve. Each bird had a beak of particular size which did not grow larger during the drought. Rather, the proportion of large beaks in the population increased from generation to generation. Thus, population evolved, not its individual members. Focusing on evolutionary change in populations, we can define evolution 
on its smallest scale called microevolution as a change in allele frequency in a population over generations. As we will see in this chapter, natural selection is not the only cause of microevolution. In fact, there are three main mechanisms that can cause allele frequency change, and these are natural selection, genetic drift, that is chance events that alter allele frequencies, and gene flow, that is the transfer of alleles between populations. Each of these mechanisms has distinctive effects on the genetic composition of populations. Let's first underline what natural selection is. The concept of natural selection is based on differential success in survival and reproduction. Individuals in a population exhibit variations in their heritable traits, and those with traits that are better suited to their environment tend to produce more offspring than those with traits that are not as well suited. In genetic terms, selection results in alleles being passed to next generation in proportions that differ from those in the present generation. For example, the fruit fly Drosophila melanogaster has an allele that confers resistance to several insecticides, including DDT. This allele has a frequency of 0% in laboratory strains of Drosophila melanogaster established from flies collected in the wild in the early 1930s prior to DDT use. However, in strains established from flies collected after 1960, that's following 20 or more years of DDT use, the allele frequency is 37%. As the Drosophila melanogaster example suggests, an allele that confers resistance to an insecticide will increase in frequency in a population exposed to that insecticide. Such changes are not coincidental. By consistently favoring some alleles over others, natural selection can cause adaptive evolution. That's evolution that results in a better match between organisms and their environment. Second in the line is genetic drift which is the random change in allele frequencies caused by sampling error across generations in a finite population. Small population size can exert a strong force on the evolution of populations through genetic drift. This can be understood by the following example. If you flip a coin 1000 times, a result of 700 heads and 300 tails might make you suspicious about that coin. But if you flip the same coin only 10 times, an outcome of 7 heads and 3 tails would not be surprising. The smaller the number of coin flips, the more likely it is that chance alone will cause a deviation from the predicted result. In this case, the prediction is an equal number of heads and tails. Similarly, the chance events can also cause allele frequencies to fluctuate unpredictably from one generation to the next, especially in small populations, a process called genetic drift. Natural selection and genetic drift are not the only phenomena affecting allele frequencies. Allele frequencies can also change by gene flow. That's the transfer of alleles into or out of population due to movement of fertile individuals or their gametes. Because alleles are transferred between populations, gene flow tends to reduce the genetic differences between populations. In fact, if it is extensive enough, gene flow can result in two populations combining into a single population with a common gene pool. Alleles transferred by gene flow can also affect how well populations are adapted to local environmental conditions. Let's switch over to the concept of species. Mayer and Ashlock have stated that the taxonomic literature reports innumerable species concepts, but they fall into four groups, and these are typological species concept, nominalistic species concept, 
biological species concept and evolutionary species concept. Let's elaborate these one by one. First of all, typological species concept. It's also called as morphological species concept. This concept was proposed by Linnaeus and his followers. It's based on the degree of morphological differences used by the taxonomists. Under this concept, a species is a set of organisms that are phenotypically similar or we can say morphologically similar and that look different from other sets of organisms. Each species is entirely constant through time and thus the concept does not allow any change in a particular species. Since it is known that there are individual variations within the species and different species may be morphologically identical as in case of sibling species. That's morphologically indistinguishable but reproductively isolated. Thus the typological species concept has been rejected. Now the second is nominalistic species concept. Oakham and his followers did not believe in existence of universals or types and for them only individuals existed and species had no real existence. According to Basie, nature produces only individuals and nothing more. Species is merely a mental concept but it's known that species are not human constructors. So this concept has also been rejected. Number third is biological species concept. Jordan Dobzhansky and Mayer clearly formulated the biological species concept. Mayer defined species as a group of potentially or actually interbreeding natural populations which are productively isolated from other such groups. Dobzhansky, being an evolutionary genetist, added the term gene pool and defined species as a reproductive community of sexually and cross-fertilizing individuals which share a common gene pool. And lastly, evolutionary species concept. Because of non-dimensional character of the biological species concept, some paleontologists are not satisfied with biological species definition. Their argument is that the species definition must involve evolutionary criteria. Simpson proposed the evolutionary species concept and defined the species as a lineage evolving separately from others and with its own unitary evolutionary role and tendencies. Mayer has criticized the evolutionary species definition saying that it is the definition of a phyletic lineage but not of the species. Having understood the concepts of species, let's talk about the mechanisms of speciation. Speciation is the evolutionary process by which new biological species arise. Darwin called it as specification. The term speciation was coined by Cook. The basic process of evolution recognizes the existence of two processes, that's anagenesis, phyletic change in the course of time, and cladogenesis or speciation, the origin of new species of organisms through splitting of pre-existing ones. The important modes of speciation to explain the mechanisms of speciation in animal species are allopatric speciation, sympatric speciation, and parapatric speciation. Let's first take allopatric mode of speciation. Allopatric mode of speciation has been called geographical speciation by Mayer. In allopatric speciation, evolution may take place in two specially separated populations from a common ancestral population. These isolated populations undergo extensive genetic change due to the action of different evolutionary forces such as mutation, selection, random genetic drift, migration, and other factors, and they genetically diverge. In due course of time, these isolated populations may develop reproductive isolating mechanisms and become independent species. 
Even if in the long run the ecological barrier is removed, these newly created allopatric species will become sympatric, but they will maintain their species level because they have already developed reproductive isolation. The process of allopatric species formation has long been recognized as a primary method of speciation. There are several interesting examples of allopatric speciation such as evolution of picture-winged drosophila species on the Hawaiian Islands or evolution of Darwin's finches on the Galapagos Islands. Now, sympatric mode of speciation. This can be defined as the origin of new species characterized by reproductive isolation within the dispersal area of the parental species. Sympatric speciation involves instantaneous appearance of reproductive isolation between the segments of the same population and new species originate in the same geographical area. If one or both populations move out of the original habitat, two allopatric species would be generated. If both the populations remain in the same geographical area, sympatric species would be recognized. Probably the best known example of sympatric speciation is the divergence of Ragulitus pomionella, the maggot fly. This species has recently diverged into two subspecies due to introduction of apple trees in the northeastern United States, where hawthorn trees were native. Initially, the flies used the hawthorn fruits to reproduce on and to lay their eggs. The introduction of apple trees provide a more nutritious food source for developing maggots as well as an escape from parasitic wasps. Difference between the two types of fruits such as maturation timing allowed for the evolution of isolating mechanisms and subsequent divergence of the two subspecies. And lastly, the parapatric mode of speciation. Sometimes two species completely isolated from each other may occur in geographical contact in some areas that's parapatry. Under such situations of slight distributional overlap, incipient species may completely speciate because hybrids may be having lowered fitness leading to elimination of genes and chromosomal arrangements which permit the interbreeding of two incipient species. This process of improving allopatrically acquired isolating mechanisms in a contact zone a process corresponding to character displacement can be called parapatric speciation. In parapatric speciation, there is no specific extrinsic barrier to gene flow. The population is continuous but nonetheless the population does not mate randomly. Individuals are more likely to mate with their geographical neighbors than with individuals in different part of the population's range. In this mode, divergence may happen because of reduced gene flow within the population and varying selection pressures across the population's range. Friends, that's all about today's program. Hope you have understood and enjoyed. Thank you and goodbye.